Fishing in ancient Greece originated during the end of the Bronze Age, between the years 1700 to 1200 BCE. On the island of Thera, now modern-day Santorini, a fisherman is depicted on a fresco holding the catch of the day. It is likely that Greeks living near the sea learned to fish from a young age, and in all periods of Greek history, there were professional Greek fishermen, called Halies. During the ancient Greek world, the primary purpose of fishing was to feed the people. The ancient Greeks would have fished sturgeon from the Black Sea and other fish in the region like tuna, mackerel, anchovies, sardines and mullet. Other popular fish included octopus, squid, lobster, prawn, eel and ray. While these fish were mainly used for food, the Greeks fished for murex, which was a red shellfish whose body yielded a deep red or purple dye that was critical for cloth manufacturing. Fishing was considered to be a skilled trade in the ancient Greek world, with the most simplest fishing done with hook and line held by hand. The Greeks also used fishing poles and practiced fly fishing, using other fish, feathers and insects as bait. However, the most important fishing technique was net fishing, which took place off a sea craft, but also off the coast too. The size of the fishing ships varied depending on the type of fish the fishermen were hunting for. Tight geographical spaces in where the migration of marine species occurred helped the fishermen fish easier. Such places included the Hellespont, the Straits of Messenia and the Bosporus. Many fish would pass by these regions, encouraging more fruitful catches for the fishermen. The Greeks often wondered how far down the sea floor was. The farthest depth recognised by the ancients was identified off the coast of Sardinia, a depth over a thousand fathoms. These Greek fishermen engaged in diving practices to help with their fishing expeditions. Some Greek divers had developed equipment that allowed them to draw in air from above the surface of the water, thereby prolonging their undersea excursions. It was these same men that poured olive oil or put sponges in their ears to prevent their eardrums from bursting. Other than curiosity, deep sea diving helped the fishermen get down to the sea floor to hunt for octopus, pearl oysters and sea sponges. Once they had dived underwater, the fishermen would hold a weight in one hand to keep them underwater, and a knife in the other to cut off the sea sponges. Upon finishing their catch, they would tug on a rope that was wrapped around their waist, which stretched back up to their comrades on the fishing boat. In the southern Peloponnese, and around the islands of Corsica and Sardinia, Greek fishermen engaged in whaling. They mainly hunted sperm whales, and surprisingly, killer whales too. This was very dangerous during the ancient periods due to the strength of the whales and the minimal bodily protection and fishing technology of the ancient Greek people. Throughout the longevity of the ancient Greek world, Greek fishermen developed deeper understandings of fishing, leading to the development of man-made fisheries. Here, the ancient Greeks learned how to help certain species grow healthily by developing lagoons. With time, they created artificial lakes and ponds especially for sea bass, mullet, oysters, and mussels. The most profound of fisheries were concrete tanks, suggesting that the ancient Greeks were involved in the artificial feeding and farming of fish. This was a critical innovation in modern fish farming, with the effect of significantly increasing production and therefore consumption. Fishing had a huge economic impact for the Greeks. Populations like Syracuse and Sicily, or Byzantium along the Bosporus, helped these groups set up fish markets to trade their local catches. The ancient Greeks also kept sea creatures as pets, and even placed them inside sacred enclosures as gifts to the gods. Some marine life was even said to wield powers to tell the future. Access to fresh fish, and even live fish, was a sign of social status, and incorporating a fish pond into one's house or villa became an important symbol of power.